You see, there are many problems. If the problem is literature, then there is a problem of English literature in India. Then there is a problem of homosexual literature in India and English. So it gets narrow and narrow and a very elite thing. You see, the <coughs> mainstream publishers will not buy a book that which they cannot sell, right? But there are important voices, Dalit voices, gay voices, women's voices, uh, voices of uh, children's rights, voices of prisoners' rights, you know, uh, the environmental movement. But they have their sectors, they have their whole ecology, you know, where they have their printing presses and their NGOs funded from the West. Indian homosexuals have nothing like that. And Uncle Lal, who was a conservative man, you know, he was, uh, he had the ethos of Calcutta, liberalism, but he said, you please don't come to my house in Calcutta. I will do the proofreading myself. He allows everybody else to come. But he just couldn't handle this in his environment, you know. And I said, please, can I say that I'm gay? And I actually have a letter from him, says, Ghalib didn't say he was gay. Why do you have to say you are gay? You can, uh, people can understand from your writing. And that wasn't good enough for me. Because unless you rub people's noses in your shit, they will not recognize that your shit smells. To them. You understand? So then finally, Uncle Lal said, fine, because it was an economic, but he was very kind to me, huh? He was having like, he was having, taking 40,000 from people and he was taking 14,000 from me for 10 years. And then when he died, I donated two lakh rupees, which the widow must have used for the funeral of her own Amki or his last illness or something. And then I reprinted all the books in three volumes, which cost another lakh to me. See, my, I love Tagore. I even want to look like him. And you do look like him. <laughs> oh, no, I'm a very uh, small person. And you know, Tagore is like Shakespeare. If you read Shakespeare, you cannot write a line because everything pales before Shakespeare. If you read and you know that Tagore's influence was still 1944. 1944, he wrote the first uh, modernist poem before he died in Bengali. He reinvented himself. He was such a great genius. He was such a great modernist. He was such a great aesthete. And the people of Bengal got very, very, very uh, tired of the shadow of Tagore. And then people said, Jibananda is the new person. Read Jibananda. But I couldn't find Jibananda's books. And finally, my sister from Chicago sent me Alan Seeley's book. Uh, I forget the name of the book title of the book, but it's on Jivananda with extensive translations. And then I wrote my pastiches. Jivananda also has a very uh, sad life with the wife rejecting him and having lovers and Jivananda having to go upstairs and she having a uh, literary erotic salon down and his whole thing about just having a portrait of his mother, never having seen his mother in Barisal, having to come in the partition and then finally become the Ginsburg of Calcutta and dying under a tram, you know, like... Uh, first, I think that... Uh, in the beginning of a movement, you should isolate yourself. You should say, I'm different from others, because my whole experience is different. A gay poem is not, love poem is not any love poem. It is a love poem which is a different kind of a love poem, because the object of love is different. You understand? Love is love, but the method of loving is different. You know, even physically, when the boys 
who I sleep with, young men, then they have a girlfriend, then I say, what's the difference? They say, it's totally different. What we do with our bodies to the girl is totally different with what we do to our, with our bodies to you. So you see that difference, physical difference is there. They don't have the maturity to know that the men and the women love in the same way because we are all human beings and we have the same kind of heart, we have the same kind of society, you know. Even Laila Majnu's love was not allowed, it was heterosexual. <laughs> Even Farad Shirin's love was not allowed, it was heterosexual. So what we have to do is actually, see, I have always published with the mainstream. Penguin, uh, Random House, uh, uh, OUP, I mean, I can't get more mainstream than this. <coughs> As a result, I have been neglected by the gay people. And the straight people are really not interested in the gay experience, right? So this is this whole thing of printing and publishing and producing and selling and <clears throat> buying, which is an economy, you know, because unless you sell your first book, they won't take your second book. Unless you sell, sell, sell your first film as a hero, you will not have a second film as a hero. You see, this is a commercial world we live in. We may be radical, we may be left-wing, we may be social reformers, but we are not Jyoti Bafule and Ambedkar, you know. We are ordinary people who have to go to the ordinary marketplace and beg for a hearing. One has to, I think, cooperate. Because after all, there is no gay world and straight world. There is only one world, which the straights and the gays have to share. But I can understand the anger of young people at the straight world if they are gay and they are misused, abused, suppressed, oppressed. Oppression has its own language, no? If I say, please don't slap me, they'll slap me on the other cheek. If I give the other cheek like Christ, they will slap me on the other cheek. Also, this is the dunya, this is the world we are living in. We are not living in some idealistic world imagined by Jesus Christ, right? But having come to that point, having literature, we have to shame our uh, oppressor also through our actually life. We can't, I mean, as a student, I can't be sleeping with my, as a teacher, I can't be sleeping with my students and teaching gay literature. Otherwise, they say, they ho, wo sab latko ke pakarne ke liye ye liberal role hai. Isn't it? So, if you want to become a leader, then you have to be more strict in your own life, more disciplined in your own life. Isn't it? That's the first thing. Now, 2017, everything has changed. Modi ji in India, Trump ji in America, huh? some uh, madcap in Philippines mowing down uh, drug addicts like dogs on the streets. You see, now, I think, and Wafa's father, who is a Muslim man, told me this, that people who were always pretending to liber be liberal under Sonia Gandhi, and who are always crypto writers now can slowly come out and say that we are writers. See, in the academy, everybody had to be left to be fashionable. Now there is no oppression because we have a right wing government. So those who were deep down in their hearts, right wing, who secretly hated gays, who secretly hated Muslims, can come out and say that. It is no more a secret hate, it's a pronounced hate. They live an easier life. Right? As for myself, I always examine myself because I want to be exceptionally honest. I don't want to live up to somebody's idea of myself. I just want to be in a situation where I know what Ho Shang is doing. You know, I don't like to be the spokesperson of the gays because I don't like so much that is happening in the gay world, uh, neglect of the poor neglect of the illiterate among, among the gays, uh, bourgeoisification of the middle class gay, huh? lower middle class gay, the consumerism, uh, the gay rights which are uh, funded by Deloitte and Google. I mean, this doesn't have anything to do with the poor gay man being raped by the policeman and the chalky. Huh? So what 
I can say is that I don't have to pretend to be leftist anymore because I was never leftist. You know, I was always a Parsi Buddhi, as I say. But this Parsi Buddhi is an educated Buddhi, and this educated Buddhi understands that there are limits to rightism also. After all, we are a sentimental people. We don't want to oppress anybody, gay or straight, right? Rich or poor, man or woman, right? So, but, but there, is, there are limits to radicalism, no? And I think that these things are cabals. I think the RSS is a cabal. The leftist feminist movement in the university is a cabal. It does not touch women of India. It is a grouping together of wolverines. Chalo, usko khao, chhoo! You know, that is the power of the pack. You know, I, I'm not a pack runner because I'm an individualist. I'm completely, totally mad in the sense that I'm totally honest. Nobody comes to GNU and say, says that I'm right of center. No student wants to come and see me. I'm right of center because GNU, you have to be leftist. Good. You see? And Brinda likes me, and Brinda understands in her own way what I am. And she had the gumption or the good fortune or the bad fortune to invent me to play all this havoc at GNU. You see? So. But a lot of Hindus just love you, being leftist or not being leftist. No, because I have a charming personality and because I'm honest. Honesty. And they love your honesty of your No, identity. honesty breeds honesty in the young. The young are honest, but they are fearful. When they see an older person who is honest and not fearful, they learn not to be fearful. They can say, yes, I'm gay also. Yes, I'm a lesbian also. If teacher can say that, I can say that. You see, I'm a role model in that sense. I don't say, ke chalo, satyagara karo, uh, dandi march karo, salt banao, you know? And I go with my crutch in the beginning with little packs following me. That's not my idea. You know, I just touch people in a real way. That is what poetry does. That is why I don't use politics, Derrida, uh, theory. I use poetry. Akshay, my student, I have only one PhD student who is a right-wing person. He belongs to the RSS, but he absolutely loves me and he says, Sir, you always talk about true experience. You don't say, Derrida ne aisa kaha. You say, Mene aisa sikha. Mene aisa bhukta. You know, I experienced it. I suffered it. So, and you always put your heart in it. You cry and you make us cry. You laugh and you make us laugh. These are basic things. It's, you don't need intellect for everything, isn't it? I mean, after all, sex is not intellect. Sex is the body, you know. You don't think and fuck. You just feel and you fuck, <laughs> right? And the children know that because they are very close to that feeling. They are like animals, right? I have become old, so the animal has become thanda now. <laughs> but, but if I get an opportunity, why? I will pounce and draw blood. Controversy and all these things don't mean anything to me. Nobody puts food on my table. I put my food on my table. Since the age of 15, I've been working, okay? And when, after a PhD, I washed toilets in Israel. But I have not saluted my father, which was authority for me. All right? So this means nothing. What you think of me? My foot. I don't care because you don't put food on my table. And I learned this from a black man in America. He said, does your father foot put food on the table? I said, yes. Then he said, then you have to salute him. Stop eating your father's food and then you kick him. Don't kick him before earning your own bread. Slaves know what slavery is. White people don't know what slavery is. Rich people don't know what poverty is. You have to learn at the source. And I have learned at the source. That's why my learning is true and correct. And these people have a... Ah, Virginia Woolf, ah, Naomi Woolf. You know, what does it mean for India? It means nothing. 
There is Aga Shahid Ali, uh, there is uh, Rukmini Bhaya Nair, uh, there is uh, Ifti Naseem from Pakistan who was in America. There is, uh, these are people who may be bisexual, out gays, closet homosexuals, but they have a vocabulary, they have an intellect, they have a uh, facility with rhythm, hmm? uh, they have imagery which appeals, you know, uh, and it is true to their experience, whatever they say, you know, they may be married women, Jamila Nishant in Urdu, huh? whom I gave courage to write about lesbianism in Urdu. I will talk about all this in my public lecture. You know, these people have given me courage, I have given them courage, they are my friends, they are my contemporaries, you know. Uh, they may not like me because they have to be married women, they have to be university professors, they have to remain in the closet in India because they might be doing a struggle in Kashmir and they would lose their following if they were known to be gay. But they still acknowledge me as an okay poet and an honest human being. They may not want to be seen socially with me, but they acknowledge me as one of them and that is a very big honor for me. You know, and I learn from them. I teach them and I learn from them. Because we are always learning and we are always teaching. I mean, even now I'm teaching. I will never stop teaching. Even I'll teach the... I used to, to teach the doctor, kya operation, kya karo, to aisa karo, aisa karo. <laughs> I mean, you know, you also get trapped in your image, though you don't want to be. And, and you encourage the young and you learn from the contemporaries and the older people. I mean, what else can I say? There is a lot of bad poetry being written and a lot of bad poetry being encouraged, you know, by the establishment. It is so rotten, so kharab, starting with Nisim Ezekiel, going to Eunice D'Souza. I mean, kya likte? The later poems of uh, Nisim Ezekiel, even an undergraduate wouldn't write of it. Or they have been anthologized. Ye kya hai? It's terrible, it's shocking. And there must be so many voices from the margins who are so good, which we don't know about because they never get published. Thank you, Hishan. Thank you, Gavra, for bringing out all this in me.